pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we humble ourselves before your throne, giving you thanks and praise, Lord God, for another day. Thanking you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your kindness and your compassion. Thank you for your love, Lord God, that you have bestowed upon us to see a brand new day. Thank you for who you are. I mean, thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for robbing your loving arms around us. Thank you for protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. Thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day. <clears throat> thank you for bringing us through this winter weather, this winter season. God, it's a privilege to be alive. We thank you, Lord God, for early rising and the down setting. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. And have free course throughout the rest of the day. Let us not be distracted by people, places, nor things. Things that try to aggravate us and irritate us. Lord God, help us to keep our minds on you. And we honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And we'll also read the morning scripture. Uh, the book of Psalms. Psalms 91 in the Old Testament. Psalm 91. says, Psalm 91, the security of the valley. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And he shall cover thee with thy feathers. Under his wings thou shalt trust. And this truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. And the word has already been blessed. And now we're going to go into the preached word. We're coming from Ephesians 3 and 20. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond the greed to ask for things according to the power that worketh within us. That's the, the, the text. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. That's what we're coming to. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. And that's, that's a positive message. That's an uplifting message for those who walk by faith and believe in God for finances, food, shelter, mate, ministry. God is going to do it because it's according to his word. But you must be born again and believe that who he says he is. He's the son of the living God. You must believe that the, the God that made you and woke you up this morning is still to provide throughout the whole week. God is going to provide. That's one of his uh, spiritual characteristics. It's always on his agenda. is for him to do, to bless his people. God wants us to be blessed. And he wants us to be, uh, to walk in faith, to walk humbly, to, to believe. And don't stress. He don't want us to stress. Stress will kill you. Stress is a yeah. silent killer. Yeah, and it yeah. is taking people away because they... It leads to one thing, to another brain and physical illnesses. Yeah. Let me finish this here. Yeah. But yeah, so we have to be mindful. Let us keep our minds on the Lord. It may, may be difficult at times. But even in your stressful time, God is still able to whisper to you, speak to you, minister to you. Tell you, I'm going to bring you through. But he wanted his trust to be in him and not in people. Sometimes we put our trust in people, and that's not good. Because man will fail you, but God won't. Yeah, yeah. Amen? So yeah. according to this text here, God will do for us not only more than we ask or desire in prayer. And you must have a life of prayer. You have a, must have a life of dedication in seeking the face of God but also even more than our imaginations can perceive. Go beyond the natural thinking, the natural mind. Go beyond your own phantom, of your own mind thinking, thinking on the things of God. If God did it before, he will do it again. God never fails us. Man will fail you. Man will put you down, but God will uplift your spirit. And it says here, so go beyond your own thinking and think on the word of God and meditate on the word. This promise is conditioned, uh, dependent on the full release of his presence, power, and grace. 
of the Holy Spirit to minister freely and through our lives. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you fully throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the weekend, in your quiet time, your time of prayer. Think on the Word. Let the Word make manifestation. Let the Word do what He's supposed to do. And, and don't try to tie God's hands because you can't. It was a play that was out in the 80s. My hands are too short to box with God. You can't box with only God. And you can't put God in a box. You can't. He's bigger than every situation, circumstances. Whatever you're going through, God is going to provide. God will prove himself. But your trust must be in him. You must believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible says, Hebrews 10 and 38, and the just shall live by faith. We move by faith. We don't move by the natural realm, but the spirit realm. And the Bible says, he that has not the spirit of God is none of his. So you must be born again, not once, but again. You must be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost give us mustard seed faith. We must have faith in God. We must believe that he's able to do what he's promised to do. And God is not short according to his word. He's not short according to his word. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to read St. John 5 and 17. St. John 5 and 17. 15 and 7, I thought. 15 and 7. And it says here, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And it says here, the secret of the answer of prayer is remaining in Christ. The more you uh, become more intimate in our lives in Christ through prayer, fasting, worship, meditation, and um, the study of the scriptures, the more your prayers will be in line with the nature of and of God's words and of Christ and thus more effectual effectual of our prayers will be he expects your prayers to be effective and effectual effectual meaning hot prayers prayers must be effective if you want God to move you must develop a prayer life a life of prayer that is one of my models that is what I stand on a life of prayer you must have to be in God's face and not always asking for everything Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. You just don't seek God for things. You seek God about his kingdom and his righteousness. And then those other things will be added unto you. He knows what your needs is before you even ask. He knows what bills need to be paid. He knows what bills shall be paid, and you take them you take those bills and you bring them before the Lord and you pray over And it's going to be done. You don't know where the money may be coming from. But God still provides. Have you ever went to the mailbox and checked the mailbox and you weren't expecting anything but it was a check in the mail? Yeah, yeah. That's what God does. That's God does. That's how God does it. He's a miracle mover and shaker. God will shake your world. But after receiving that unexpected gift, how does he how does he expect us to act in the aftermath? Still give him praise for for the next situation. And that's Brother Quentin asking questions. He's just being himself and wondering that's funny. Mm -hmm. But it's true. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to ask. No question is never done. My teacher, Miss Tuss, told me years ago as a teenager, she says, uh, Randy Newman, how did you say it? I'm gonna say how she said it. She said, if you don't ask a question, it's not done. She said, but if you don't ask the question, you become dumb. It was something like that in that phrase. But I understood what she was saying. You have a right to ask questions, whether it be natural, spiritual. But when he meets your need the first time, believe me, he's going to do it again. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So that means he never changes. We change, but he never changes. So if he did it before, he gonna do it again. You could be walking down the street and find a hundred dollar bill. 
part of that money that you just found will be turned into a bill, because it has happened to me. I had a bill that needed to be paid, and the guy spoke to me and said, go down the street. I walked down the street, and there the money was right there on the ground. He said, I'm go pay that bill. It don't always got to come from somebody else. It happens. Yeah. It happens. God don't ever fail his people. He don't fail his people. But he won us our trust. And a lot of us have trust issues. That same issue that you have with that person, take it from that person, that trust, and give it to God. Take it out away from that person and give it to God. Meet God in his face. By faith is how God meets our needs. He ain't going to do it again. He never lies. God don't ever lie. And God is not a liar. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent about anything. Amen? Amen. Philippians 2 and 13. and 13 says for it is God which worketh in both to will and to do good pleasure God's grace works in his children to produce in both the desire and power to do his will however God works is not on a compulsion uh, or irresistible grace the work of grace is within us so God, is, we're walking in a season of grace. We're not walking up under mercy in the Old Testament. We're walking in grace. So his grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. We walk in his grace, but don't take advantage of his grace. When I say take advantage, and hear this, just because we're under God's grace and not under the law, that don't mean you take advantage of God. That means don't go out willingly sinning and say, oh, by grace, God got me covered. You don't play with a holy God, or he'll take his hand off of you. He'll have you walk around here with a reprobate mind, like he did the people in the book of uh, Romans, chapter number one. We ain't never supposed to get to know God in starting or wanting to play. You never play with a holy God. What am I saying? I'm not switching chapters or verses or the text. While you live in godly for, for the Lord, stay in his, his God-given presence. Stay under his, his shadow, his secret place, his pavilion, his synagogue, his temple, your time of prayer. You stay there until God meets you at your needs. Give him thanks in advance for meeting the needs, and then he's going to do it. You know, sometimes we get a little irritable. We've we, we all been there. Yeah. It seems like God is taking his slow time. And yeah, that can be here at the right time. Look like I could you could you move that a little quicker? Could you you know? <laughs> yeah. And he's just trying to show you how to be patient. And patience is a virtue. That's true. But don't ever ask God to give you no patience. But he'll show you what a patient is. It may not be fun, but he'll put it on you. Don't ever ask God for patience. That's the wrong thing to be asking. So in your way, give him thanks. Give him praise. Worship him. Thank you, God, for meeting every need. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. God, thank you for being clothed in my right mind. God, thank you for being able to get dressed, wash up, get ready for service. All that, he hears it. So that's how you get through the day. That's how you know that God is going to supply your need. I was going through some here recently. And the Lord spoke and said, I'm going to send somebody to help you. And sure enough, it came through. That bill was paid. And when you get money, spend it wisely. Spend it wisely. If it's just because you have money, don't mean you spend it because you have it. Yeah. Take baby steps with money. Because money is hard to get. Yes, yes, it is. Have plan with money. Do something right with money. Yeah. Invest. Because it takes time to make money. Pay your tithes, give your offering, and watch God move. He'll, he'll move beyond what you can ever ask for things. So what am I saying? You need the power buy, to believe. Buy gold and silver, too. Yeah. Gold and silver is a good investment. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when he's telling the truth, he's telling yeah. the truth. But that's true. And, and you know, investment in stocks, CDs, and bonds. We ain't going to go that far to do it to that. But that is true. That is true. You, and you're supposed to save money as well. 
Yeah. But paying your tithes, giving your offering is important, and God sees how you're giving to his house. You're not giving so much to the leader, you're giving to the house. And everybody in God's house is not a play toy. And that's true. Everybody in God's house is not a play toy. So let us be encouraged on today and know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we need to ask for think according to the power that works within us. Stand on the word of God. Stay prayed up. Stay in reading the word. Stay fasting. Stay in prayer. Stay consistent. Don't be in and out with God. Be in him. Be in Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so he wants us to stay in him and move in him and do what he has called us to do. So be blessed, everyone. I am Pastor of Prophetic Voice, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries, and I hope the word blessed you on today. So stay blessed, be encouraged, and I speak today. Amen. Amen.